Hello and welcome to OH3 SPN. Now what is an end-fed dipole? Can this complete contradiction in terms actually exist? If so, how would we construct it? Now before I start, I'd just like to say that just as I start producing regular YouTube videos, I've developed a medical condition, which means I can't sit at my desk for too long. So this will be a short video today, and hopefully I'll get back to my normal routine in the near future. The topic of today's video came from an interesting Facebook post like these things often do. A newcomer to the hobby was talking about problems with his antenna. Now I think this was probably related to RFI or, or related issues with RF in the shack. And the first question people asked was, what antenna are you using? And the answer was, well I'm using an end-fed dipole. And no one really questioned this. But I did reply saying, what exactly do you mean, an end-fed dipole? And of course the original poster had just confused terms. but. As a consequence, this led to quite an interesting discussion. I mean, a, a dipole is a balanced antenna, it's fed in the centre. Or if you want to purposely break things and turn it into a compromised multiband antenna, then you can feed it off-centre. But can you feed it from the end? Whilst preparing to produce this video, I did search online, and I found some very confusing articles via Google, which were really kind of nonsensical talking about feeding a dipole, sorry, uh, an end-fed dipole, against the electrical ground in the shack, which is not really a dipole at all, but, but I, I won't go too far into that. Basically, it's mostly a nonsensical term, and most of the things I found written about it really are just confused. So let's start with a basic dipole and my fantastic drawing ability. We have our antenna here. We have a ballon here and our feeder there. So this is a balanced antenna, centre fed, as a dipole should be. Now we can move this feed point. We can purposely upset this balance because this is really a single band antenna, although it will work on the harmonics of the, the band. But if we shift the feed point here, um, we have a slightly different Ballon transformer, we can transform the impedance so it's still a 50 ohm match. It's no longer balanced and we will get related issues as a result of that, but we can now feed it on multiple bands. I think I've covered some of this on previous videos, so I, I won't go in de into detail. But the argument online with some of the confused sites is well, we'll just feed it here. So it's an end-fed dipole, but it's not a dipole because di is two elements. And if you're feeding it against the shack electrical supply, let's make that an earth symbol, then you've basically got a long wire or, you know, a random wire, and you're feeding it against a counterpoise or worse, your house mains wiring. This is not a dipole. So what could an end-fed dipole be? And this is where things got really interesting and kind of a little bit crazy, to be honest, but it's a kind of crazy that I like. I kind of love it and I kind of hate it. So let's see. The suggestion was we have a length of coax and we have our centre conductor. Now, the, the idea is this is our dipole. This whole section of coax. We strip the outer here. So we have one half here, and we have our other half here, using the outer, and that's not to scale, of course, perhaps a little bit better. So we have one half here, and we have the other half here. So the, the center is shielded from this point, so it's only really radiating from here on this half. And the outer here only exists on this half. So theoretically, this forms the other side of the dipole. So it is center fed here. But of course, this isn't really, this is connected to the shield. This is connected to ground back in the shack. So again, it's not really a dipole because we're missing, we're missing a ballon here. 
So in order to make this behave as a dipole, we need somehow a method of separating the outer shield here, this outer element, from the rest of the coax, which will be running down to shack. And how do we do that? Well, the, the simple suggestion is to turn this into an ugly ballon or to wind an ugly ballon here. So you have a, a number of turns around a former. I mean, that would really be significantly wider. So you have this ugly ballon wound on a former here. So this chokes the outer and separates it from the, the rest of the feeder. So could this work? Yes, it could. Would I recommend it? Probably not, unless it's really unique circumstance where you cannot, you, you want to put a dipole in the air, but you cannot feed it from the center. I can't imagine what scenario would, would result in that specific requirement. But theoretically, if you wanted a dipole, and this was your only option, then yes, I can see it working. But I, I can also see unwanted interactions. I, I, it would be interesting to model this. I should be clear here, when, when people are talking about end-fed dipoles online, chances are they're mistaken, they're confusing terms, they have a, they're referring to any antenna as a dipole and it's end-fed, therefore it becomes an end-fed dipole. But just possibly, they could also be talking about something like this, which I think is a really novel or creative solution. Again, I, I can't imagine when this would be needed, but theoretically, we can have an end-fed dipole. The RF choke here would have to be carefully designed so that it was very effective on the band of operation. And this may reduce the effectiveness if you did want to use it on the harmonics. But yes, Theoretically, an end-fed dipole is possible, despite it sounding like a complete contradiction in terms. So that's all I wanted to say, and please do leave a comment if you have anything to add. 73s from OH3SPN.